Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, refiners peg Naira at 1,000 Naira per dollar, and it says petrol would drop below 600 Naira. I know that's quite optimistic, but let's see this. The Crude Oil Refiners Association of Nigeria, Koran, has called on the federal government to peg the foreign exchange rate at 1,000 Naira per dollar to bring down the price of petrol from Dangote Refinery to below 600 Naira per liter. Current spokesperson Eche Udoko made this appeal in light of the recent surge in petrol prices, which have risen to between 950 and 1,000 naira per liter across the country. Idoko explained that the current high prices reflect the ongoing fluctuation of the naira and the cost of crude oil on the international market. He stated that the government intervention through the pegging of the exchange rate for locally refined products could lead to a significant reduction in the price of petrol. Now, joining us to discuss this is Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a national spokesperson for CUPP. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. And thanks so much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're talking about pegging um, the, the naira to the dollar at 1,000 naira per dollar. And, you know, reports are saying or experts are saying that this would obviously reflect in the price and we might just have petrol for 600 naira. Now, I know that, you know, as of last year, if someone had said buying petrol for 600 naira, everyone would, you know, would just go bonkers like, why would I buy petrol for 600 naira? But now we're, look at us here on the other side, and we're clamoring, we're waiting to see if there can be a reduction. But I want to get your take on this. What do you think about the fact that, you know, refiners are asking for the federal government to peg this? And, you know, of course, it would just reflect in the pricing as well. Oh, thank you so much. You know, uh, first, let me... Because I watched your last segment, I saw your guests and saw your because they do election. And what caught my attention was the president's uh, own assessment of the elections, claiming that uh, the their victory, so-called victory in the do state, uh, was a support mm. for the economic policies of this government. I mean, that, 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 that I was I was almost shocked that he could say that it was it was in support of the destruction. Economic policies of his government that the people in the do state uh, voted allegedly for for the APC. When all of us, when all Nigerians know that Tinubunomics is a series of policy somersaults that has, that has disastrous consequences for the socio-economic structures of this country. You know, if you look at the CPAs, many critical points assessment of this government, you know that it's failure all around: security failure, economy failure, uh, health failure, education failure, everything failure. Now. Coming back to the issue of uh, pegging uh, the dollar at one thousand to to uh, at one thousand to the dollar, you know, I uh, we, we we have to understand. Anybody with a little bit of economic literacy, we understand that uh, the government, the federal government of Nigeria, does not have the fiat to peg dollar at any at any at any point. It's not our currency, so um, while it is a very good uh, suggestion, it's a suggestion. But uh, it cannot be done. If it were possible, we would have said, okay, peg the uh, the dollar at 200 naira per dollar or 500 naira per dollar, as the case may be. But you see, like just like the stock market, foreign exchange responds to policy. It, it responds to policy regime of any government. So if your policies are all right, your currency will appreciate against foreign currencies. But you cannot buy fiat. You know why they tried to do that two, three months ago? Uh, they, they, they wanted to to pay the uh, the dollar okay, 800, 900, they succeeded the pump dollars into the into uh, into the system, uh, hoping that they, they would uh, they floated the naira, hoping that uh, they would be able to. Uh, at some point, they succeeded in going back as low as uh, 900 naira to the dollar. But what happened? Because it, it it is not not the natural forces of the market that created that. It was an artificial creation of government. It, 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 it failed. Within two, three weeks, it went back to 1,800. Now it has come back to maybe 1,600. Because just last week, to exchange, uh, looking for $4,000, you needed 6 million naira. So that's where we are. It is policy. You know, foreign exchange, like the stock market, responds to policy. It is not that by fiat. That you cannot commandeer the, the naira to uh, appreciate. You cannot commandeer the dollar to depreciate against your own currency. Even when you have not succeeded in doing so against the, uh, what you can call small 
currencies of uh, of the Re Republic of Benin, for instance, and you want to do that uh, for the dollar, the government does not have fear to do that. It will have been it will have been better because you see this issue of petrol, so that you can be able to get uh, buy fuel at uh, maybe six hundred or less than six hundred naira per dollar uh, per per liter. The, the government is not interested in that. The government does not have the political will to have Nigerians buy fuel at cheaper than 1,000 Naira. That is why you will see that the government did not wait for Dangote refinery to, uh, to announce the prices they want to sell their petrol, their product, before the NNPCL went to, went to the public and said, hey, Dangote fuel uh, will, will be sold for so so uh, amount of money. And then the company came out and said, who sent you? Who sent you a message? Now, who sent you a message? That we have not said anything about the prices of our, but what they did was to impose that price regime on on, on Dangote refinery, and I think they succeeded in intimidating the, the Dangote refinery to keep quiet. And now they said they'll be selling for eight ninety eight or less than nine hundred naira. But, but ordinarily, it should be Dangote refinery is not an extension of the NPCL. So NPCL had no business announcing how much Dangote refinery will sell its fuel. But because they wanted to impose a price regime on the on the company, they went ahead and and then the, the, those ones they came out and said, "Look, we didn't send you any message. We didn't. We have not mentioned anything. We have not announced any price." But they silenced that the inquiry. Only God knows what they did to threaten them into silence and agreeing to the price regime set by. Why should the NPCL be the ones setting the price that a private company will sell its product? That is how we get this. Government people in government can be. This is how insensitive they can be. This is how inhumane they can be. They should have let that good refinery announce its own price regime, and then Nigeria should now determine whether they, they they are okay with it or not. Because all of us who are hopeful that that good refinery wants to start production now, the prices of fuel will, will, will go down, and that was what was going to happen before this government through NNPCL forced a price regime on them. And then, because they, they are in business, they don't want to lose it. Because you see, maybe through sabotage or, or accident, the, the Dangote refinery, a few days to, 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 to start production, it, got, uh, the, the, it caught fire. Then later, there were scarcity here and there. Uh, they said this is not 40% completed. It cannot produce. All of manner of things, just, you will see that there was a deliberate effort. There was a deliberate commitment to frustrate, to sabotage the functionality of that refinery. We, we, we must know that. Um, you can see now, if at the point people are saying that even Dagote himself, his life was in danger and the rest of that because there, there were threats from local international cabars who are hell bent on imprisoning and enslaving Nigerians, exploiting Nigerians to, to, to continue to get richer. So now, it is, it is, it's in the same process, the same policy of this government that says that the president keeps saying, I will take hard decisions. I will take Making hard decisions. Hard decision that is only hard on Nigerians, but softer on him, his family, and his cronies. Is that that we are not looking for hard decisions? We are work, we are we are looking for creative decisions. We are looking for productive de de decisions and actions that we ameliorate the sufferings and the poverty and the hunger in the land. Not the one that continue to you know complicate matters for 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 the regular Nigerian. And that is what is happening. It is only the people who are in government who are who have no. Uh, inkling, no, no clue about how much pain they are inflicting on Nigerians. They don't use their money to buy fuel. They don't use their money to maintain the cars they are driving. They don't even use their money to buy the cars they are driving. They don't use the, their money to buy the jets they are flying. They don't use the money to maintain the houses they are living in. They don't use their money to buy clothes. They don't use, they change wardrobes for them, but government money, government money, their children, education, government money, their wives, government money, their Food, government money, they are drink, they are water, government money, they are wine, government money, they are luxurious lifestyle is being sponsored by government money. They are, you know, the kind of you know they, they live large and they continue to ask us to live as little as possible. Uh that is what you are seeing. That is what you are seeing. And uh, nobody should be under any illusion. I've said that before that things are going to go better anytime soon because. Now, it will take a patriotic, committed, creative, and intelligent leadership to be able to reverse what is the evil, the, the, the harm that but this people are doing to Nigeria.
290,000. And that can take almost two decades of commitment, of, of committed leadership and patriotic leadership and intelligent and capable and competent leadership to reverse. I mean, I was just listening to you speak, and I was laughing when you were saying, um, you know, everything, you're living large with, obviously, our monies and expecting us to live lead to. And, um, you know, yeah. the things that you highlighted, it takes a patriotic, I was just trying to write that down, patriotic, committed, intelligent um, leader to reverse, you know, where we are today. But, I mean, there was a headline yeah. that was um, on, I think it was on the Daily Trust this morning, and it said that Libya, um, you know, is selling petrol for, I think, about 52 naira per litre. And uh, Nigeria, on the other hand, we're looking at 950 to 1,000 naira, depending on where you are in the country. And uh, the statistics here says Libya has, obviously, Libya has the highest amount of crude oil reserves in the continent with about 48.4 billion barrels, while Nigeria reserves um, amounted to about 36 Point nine billion barrels, and this was in August. Um, this was just last month when we got these statistics. But what do you think, Nigeria, who is known obviously to be an oil producing nation, just like Libya, our counterparts? You know, if we're looking at the pricing, there's a huge disparity between both of them. How do you think we need to manage our resources better? Because at the end of the day, what the you know, what the government needs to be thinking about is reversing where we are now, like you've said, a committed, intelligent leadership to say, okay, you know what, the welfare of the people is our priority. How do you think they can, you know, make that happen for Nigerians, for the citizens to ensure that, you know, we're not, we're not struggling. I remember um, you, just before we came on air, me and you were having a conversation. We we're just talking about how we're surviving. And that is, the, that is the story for so many Nigerians right now. We're just surviving. We're just trying to put our heads above water. What do you think the government can do right now? And petrol is one a major product that cuts across every single sector. So if petrol is expensive, of course there's going to be inflation. Of course everything will be expensive. How do you think the government can help us better in this state right now and reverse where we are today? Now, uh, if, uh, you know, we are barely surviving, actually. We are barely surviving. Um, now, if the government is truthful, if the government is humane, if the people in government are patriotic enough, the best thing to resolve, because anything that affects PM, PMS, premium meter spirit, petrol, you know, we affect everything down the economic chain line. So that is what is happening. You, the government should partner with Dangote or any other private, all other private refineries that are coming up. You, they have to partner with them. They don't have to compete with them. You know, if you partner with them, you don't have to compete with them. We have the crude oil. You know, you can give these people crude oil at highly subsidized rates so that they, when they produce the cost of production will reduce and then they'll be able to sell to nigerians at affordable uh prices i i, I, I don't know whether you get what, what i mean if they partner if you have they have to partner with dangote refinery and all other private refineries that are coming up not to compete with them you know you, you now have to support them to su supply crude through subsidized rates to them. You see what well, the Dangote, Dangote refinery was supposed to take off. It took off more than almost a month after the time they were supposed to take off because the government refused to give them a crude oil. So they needed to go to Brazil to bring crude, crude oil to Nigeria. In fact, they needed to go as far as USA to bring crude oil to Nigeria to be, before they start uh, produ uh, production. Now, look at that. So there's a deliberate attempt to frustrate the, the private refineries you know, to function. They, they ran the government refineries are ground. They, they, they have been turning around, turning around, turning around, and then what they are turning, they say they have been turning around, turning around maintenance. What they have been doing is they are just they are, they are just turning around on the same spot. You know, all manner of movement without a single motion. That, and this, now they want to frustrate private enterprises, private entrepreneurship to be able to give Nigerians cheaper uh, fuel to buy. If the pattern, if the government is able to supply crude oil, they are able, they can, but will they? Do they have the political will to do so? They, they, they need to give crude oil to these refineries at highly subsidized rates so that the production can come out at cheaper. We can, they can still do it and we can still be buying fuel at like uh, as low as 300 naira, depending on how much they are giving uh, crude oil to, 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 to the private refineries. That's what they are Others are coming up. Hopefully, the uh, 
they will frustrate uh, that outcome. Hopefully, so the, that, that's the only way they can do it. Because look, today, if the prices of petroleum products should crash down today, you will discover that all of that it will be a shell reaction. It will be a shell reaction. Uh, prices of food will, will, will go down. Prices of materials, building materials, and every other thing will, will go down. Even the, the money we are paying it is school fees will go down. So Nigeria will have you know a, a breathing space. We are, we are shocked up now. We are so much shocked up that you don't even know what is coming next. That is the situation. If they are able to support and assist private refineries, to, uh, we own the crude. Yes, uh, we thank them uh, if they are still giving the crude to them in Naira, that, as they promised. But they can do better by selling at cheaper rate that they are selling at the inter international market to our own local car private refinery so those that kind of policy will substantially you know reduce the tension in the land you know we substantially de-escalate the situation in the night we substantially reduce the inflation look at the way the, the inflation is going on you know so um we need to that, that's what the government should, should do yeah. but they know they, they know what to do but will they do it but because we have we, we, we are operating system, All right, sir, we, we have, have to go now. We, we operate a system that only benefits the people that are in government, not mindful of what happens to Nigerians. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I think something that you said obviously is the fact that the kind of leaders that we want, we, they need to be transformational. They need to be committed. They need to be patriotic. And with that, of course, you would see you would see the lives of Nigerians become better. And um, when it comes to ensuring that they are partnering with all of these local refineries. Um, I don't know if they will have the political will, but we hope that they will have the political will to do that. And also make sure that our own refineries, you know, are working. Because I'm sure if our refineries are working, um, the pricing of imports will obviously be significantly reduced. And of course, that would also reflect into the price that we buy this product. I don't know if pegging... Um, you know, a thousand naira per dollar would work, but I'm sure there are other measures and other policies that they can put in place that would just help this situation right now. This is where we have to wrap it up here. Thank you so much, Comrade Mark, for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Let's continue to, to have hope in Nigeria. Amen. Not in the government, you're not in this, but let's continue <laughs> to have hope in Nigeria. Amen. Hopefully we'll get there one day. Amen, Thank you so sir. much. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right, so we're speaking with Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a national spokesperson for CUPP. And we've just been talking about the state of our crude oil and our petrol and expecting the prices to reduce to about 600 naira per litre. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you for having the breakfast with me. As always, my name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.